Hello and welcome to the Altap EasyHDRI overview and tutorial. Today I'll be showing you how to install it and I'll showcase all of the key features that the add-on offers you. For the purposes of today's tutorial, I'll be using Blender 4.3.2, but you can use any of the supported versions that are listed on the product page. So first things first, go ahead and download the zip file. Make sure you don't unzip it and simply drag and drop it into the viewport. Make sure Overwrite and Enable and Install is enabled and click OK. If you're using Blender 4.2 and below, you want to go into Edit, Preferences, Add-ons and use this drop-down Install from Disk or just the Install button if you're using even older versions. When the add-on is installed, it will be located in the World Properties tab here under Alt-Tab Easy HDRI. The very first feature of the add-on is drag and drop HDRIs. You no longer have to open up the World Shader Editor and do your node setup for every HDRI that you want to try and swap it in there, but you can simply take any HDRIs that you downloaded off of websites like Polyhaven or any other good websites that have a wide variety of HDRIs and put them in any folder or anywhere on your computer and simply drag and drop them into the viewport. The add-on will automatically set everything up for you and you're good to go. To change the values and settings of the currently used HDRI, you want to go into World Settings and inside you will find HDRI Strength and Rotation. So if we go ahead and decrease this, you'll see that the HDRI becomes darker and with this we can simply rotate it. Over here I can already give you a tip. Uh, as you saw when I moved the HDR rotation in Cycles Preview, this is somewhat slow. So to increase the performance of this, we can switch it over to Material Preview and make sure you drop this down and you enable both scene light and scene world. Now with those two enabled, if we spin our HDRI and increase or decrease the strength, you'll see it's much more in real time. The next feature that we'll go over is the ground projection. Now ground projection is a simple toggle that takes your HDRI and it projects the ground onto the actual flat 3D geometry. What this results in is a real world looking HDRI. So it kind of converts this infinite image that just makes every object float inside of it into an actual world that your objects can be in. Now, again, just like with the normal HDRI method, if I go into material preview, the performance will be much better and much more real time so I can adjust it easier. With the ground projection toggle enabled, you will find two new values that you can adjust, which are the sphere mapping settings for location and scale of the Z values. Now what this really means is it just allows you to push the HDRI image that's projected onto the sphere up or down the Z location. And then the scale value can kind of compensate for some of the tearing or stretching that you see that that causes. The default settings are optimized for most HDRIs, but it really also depends on the HDRI itself. This works best with open field HDRIs that don't have a lot of close and sharp corners close to the center of the HDRI. And just like before, the drag and drop feature still works. So you could just simply drag in a new HDRI and the ground projection will be set up for it as well. So I can quickly just switch my HDRIs and they all work and I get real time feedback on how they look. So up next, if we go ahead and close the world settings and go into HDR library, you're gonna see that all three HDRIs that we've used in the scene have been stored in our library. So say I wanna go back to the parking lot, I can simply click anywhere here and it will switch between the HDRIs. Up here, we have the categories. So we have all HDRIs and favorites. I will explain later in the video how you can add your own categories or your own folders of HDRIs. Beneath that, we have a simple search function. And if you have multiple HDRIs, you will have the paging system enabled as well. I can quickly mention here that in the settings down below, you can adjust the items per page. So how many of these will be displayed per page? Now, the beautiful thing about Alt-Tab EasyHDRI and its library is that this library is actually global to your Blender install. So for example, we have used these three HDRIs in this project. And if I go ahead and just click new, let's don't save. So we just have a new project here. I can go into my world settings, EasyHDRI, my library, and I can just reuse any of the HDRIs that, uh, that I've used before. They will just get re-added into this project and allow me to work on it. If you don't like clicking these, you can also use the previous and next HDRI buttons to quickly change views. 
Now to add your own HDRIs or your own library of HDRIs to the add-on, you simply click the folder icon here on the right of the category selection. You locate your folder that contains all the HDRIs and you click add to library. The add-on will add all of the HDRIs here and it's also going to name the category the same name that your folder was named. And now you can simply select any HDRI and it's going to add it to the scene that you are currently in. Now for the last few important tips and tricks about this tool is every time you drag and drop a new HDRI into it, it actually takes that HDRI file and it copies it over to the add-ons library. Now you can disable that feature if you're low on disk space or you just don't like that HDRIs get automatically added to your library. You can always go to settings and under the HDRI library directory, disable the copy files to library toggle. If you would like your directory to be stored somewhere else, you can also change it here and you can also see what is stored inside of it right here. To disable the add-ons drag and drop functionality, you can simply disable this toggle right here. Now, a few things worth mentioning as well is that one thing that can impact the look of your HD the look of your HDRI is obviously the resolution of your HDRI, as well as the actual scale of the sphere. So you can go ahead and change the scale alongside the Z location and scale value. So that about sums up the quick overview and kind of just the main parts of the add-on. Uh, I will do a more in-depth tutorial on how to use it on an actual project or on a full scene and how to really dial in those values as well as I'll go ahead and explain the actual shader setup for the sphere itself and how it works and how you can further adjust these values to make it look more to your liking. So thank you guys for watching, I hope this was helpful and if you have any suggestions or thoughts about the tool please let me know down in the comments below and I hope you have a nice day.